Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number three from the uh, June 2023 Pure Mathematics P1 International A Level at Excel exam. And here we have uh, 3a, which is about this quadratic expression 3x squared plus 12x plus 13. And we need to express it in the form a times a x plus b all squared plus c, where a, b, and c are integers to be found. So basically what we're asked to, to do here is to complete the square for this expression, express it in this format. So completing the square is a very important skill to have. And this is how you do it. Something which is really from IGCSE kind of time. And so what I like to do is this. When I complete the square, you start off with the expression as it is. And I want, it, I want the number in front of the x squared to be a 1, as it is in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out 3. I can't divide by 3 because it's an expression. So I'll take out the 3 from these two terms. I like to do with these two terms separately. So x squared plus, and if I've taken out 3 from here, it's like I've divided it by 3 and then written the factor outside. So I'm going to do the same for this. I'm going to divide the 12 by 3, which gives me 4. That's 4x and plus 13. So I have just prepared it now for completing the square. I haven't actually started completing the square yet. Now I'm going to take the part that's inside this bracket, x squared plus 4x, and I'm going to complete the square for this and kind of ignore what's going on on the outside and around it. So I'll write the 3 there, and then I'll complete the square for what's inside this bracket. Now when you complete the square, you write a bracket that's squared like this, and of course there's going to be x here. If there's a positive number um, here, you're going to write a plus, and then you take the 4x, the coefficient of the x term, you write a half of it down, okay, and then outside the bracket, you take away always the square of that number. So I'm going to take away the square of 4. Whether there's a minus in here or a plus in here, it doesn't matter. I always take away the square of this number. Then I close. Well, the reason why we put the minus 4 here is to take away that extra 4 that we have. So we're gonna, that's why we take it away. And even if it was, for example, if that was x squared minus 4x, and I'll have x minus 2 all squared, I'll have x squared minus 4x, and I'll still get a plus 4 at the end. That's why you always take away the number that's in here squared. You always take it away. Okay. Now, to finish off now, we can basically simply just um, distribute this 3 inside this bracket. So 3 times x plus 2 squared, and 3 times minus 4, which is negative 12. And then you've got your plus 13. And now we can combine these two. So 3 times x plus 2 squared um, plus 1. So that is the expression in its completing, in the, in its completed the square form. We've completed the square. And it says where a, b, and c are integers to be found. So it says in this form, we don't have to state the values of a, b, and c. If you want to, you can. So in this case, a is 3, and b is 2, and c is 1. Okay, you don't have to state that unless it says, you know, state the values of A, B, and C. Here, this is the right form. That's the answer. That's fine. So there's three part A done. Now we're going to go on to part B. So now for part B, it says, hence, hence, very important word. Sketch the curve with the equation Y equals 3X squared plus 2X plus 13. On your sketch, <coughs> show clearly the coordinates of the Y intercept and the coordinates of the turning point of the curve. Okay, so when it says hence, it means using what we just did. So I'm going to take my expression that we got, the same expression except we completed the square, and it became y equals 3x squared, 3 times x plus 2 squared plus 1. So we have to use this in order to sketch this curve with the equation. Now, it tells us that um, we only have to put the coordinates of the y-intercept and the coordinates of the turning point of the curve. That implies there are no x-intercepts, and we can kind of understand this because the turning point, the vertex of the curve, will always be given by, when it's in this form, okay, the vertex will be given by the value of x that makes this bracket 0, which is negative 2, and what's left on the outside after, which is 1. So we can see that the lowest this curve can ever get, we know that it's a quadratic, all right, because it's of this form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So it has this type of form, this type of shape, all right, because the coefficient of x squared is positive, so it's like opens upwards, has a minimum point. So the minimum value, the minimum value of this is y equals 1. 
Okay, that's the lowest it can ever go. All right. So if the lowest it can go is one, that means it will never touch the x-axis. And the x-coordinate of the minimum is negative two. Okay, so it's gonna it's gonna, you know, be negative two and one. So it will never touch the x-axis as the question implies. So we have to basically just draw a little sketch. Always use a ruler for your axes to make it neater. Okay, so I've got our sketch here. Now, do you know what I like to do, actually? Whoops. What am I doing? Going too far ahead. What I actually like to do is the following. I don't like to do it this way. And what I like to do is I like to draw my parabola without any pressure to make it go through any point. So I'm going to draw my my parabola, try to do it as, as neat and as good as possible. Okay, without any pressure. So that's my parabola shape. I'll make it go outwards. Okay, now I know that this never touches the x-axis. Right, so I can draw the x-axis below it, like this. Okay, if you wanted to confirm, confirm that it never crosses the x-axis, in another way, you could try to solve this equation. If you try to solve where 3 times x plus 2 squared plus 1 equals 0, then you'd have 3 times x plus 2 squared equals negative 1, so x plus 2 squared equals negative 1 third. When you try to solve this, there'll be no solution because you're trying to find the square root of a negative number. That confirms what we already understand. And we know that the vertex is when x is negative 2. So negative 2 must be over here somewhere. That means the y-axis must be on this side. The y-axis must be somewhere over here. Let me make it thinner. The y-axis must be somewhere over here when, of course, it goes through x equals 0. All right, so that's going to be the origin. That's the y-axis. That's the x-axis. That's the vertex, negative 2, 1. That's the y-intercept, which was, if you look at here, the y-intercept is going to be 13. Okay, you can see when, when x is 0, y is 13. So that's the y-intercept. Okay, the, the y-intercept is always when x equals 0. So here we have our graph y equals 3x squared plus 12x plus 13. So the vertex, it says on your, the y intercept, the coordinates of the y intercept, so we can say 0, 13, it says coordinates, so let's write the coordinate form. And the vertex, we can see um, they want the coordinates of that, so it's going to be a negative 2, as we said, and 1. Negative 2, 1 is the vertex. So that's all we have to show, and we have completed this question. All right, so that is the answer to question number three. Pretty simple question, actually, to be honest. Um, and that's that, question three done. Okay, so other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that appears on, on the top here, June 2023 questions. Other questions from the topic of quadratics can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And you can watch a video that appears here, which will tell you how to use my channel efficiently. Thank you for watching and see you soon.